Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Masahiro Kasahara from University of Tokyo. And I usually, um, my group usually develops evidence. So um, I usually give a talk about um, gene analysis tools such like um, alignment tool and assemblers for long reads or um, scaffolder or consensus builder or graph genome browser, things like that. But today I'm going to give you a rather different story. It's a story about installing software. Once upon a time, there was installation hell. In Twitterverse, uh, there are all kinds of negative emotions and feelings about installing uh, biomatic software. And Nick Lohman says, um, is, um, biomatic efficiency is defined by the time fuffling around installing uh, um, independencies and, oops, and Titus Brown says, uh, there is a second 90% of biomatics um, that is um, installing biomatic software and dependencies. And Min Tan says, uh, the most difficult part of biomatics is installing software. So, so, so anyway, installing software is a huge pain. So uh, let me show you an example of installing Sigma. Um, a friend of mine, uh, who is a pure biologist, uh, took um, almost three months to get it work. And, and to be fair, um, the Sigma has been now discontinued. So uh, it's not supported anywhere. And also there are lots of um, available packages that is very easy to install. Uh, th those packages were provided by third parties, not provided by the others. But, but anyway, it's a five-year-old story. So um, let's get it back to five-year-old, five-year back. And um, when you try to install Sigma, um, uh, you want to take a look at documentation of Sigma. And easily, you will find a dependency of Sigma. Uh, you will find, oh, um, I need to install gene ID, gene wise, hammer, and CBI blast plus. And you find it very easy to install gene ID and hammer and and CBI blast plus. So we'll emit these procedures, but uh, you would you would get stuck at installing gene wise because gene wise was developed by Avon Bernie, who is, uh, who is now the director of Ambo EVI. So and he, he's so busy, so he he, he couldn't update the packages properly. So uh, it doesn't compile on recent Linuxes. We need a, um, some patch to change and include the files or uh, change make files to get it compiled on recent machines. And this is only a part of the um, patch that is provided by a friend of mine, um, uh, Nishi Amosan. And a Linux newbie wouldn't be able to install GeneWise because they couldn't uh, create these kind of patches. And also, uh, a thing newbie often forgets is to uh, set uh, environmental variables in a proper way. So um, here are the problems we faced with. Um, first, we need to install dozens of tools for genomic analysis. And each of them has a lot of dependencies, uh, tools, libraries, OS, a lot of things. And sometimes um, some of them have conflicts with each other. Uh, sometimes, um, let's say, um, we install the tool X that depends on Python 2.7, but another tool that depend, uh, is um, have a dependency on Python 3.7 or 6. And each program has a dependence on NumPy and SciPy of different versions. And I have more than seven pips on my laptop. And also, um, we need to install a lot of uh, different versions of the same tool for reproducibility. Uh, imagine um, I started uh, a new project. And we want to make sure that every tool is the latest one. So um, let's say uh, I start to use uh, BWA version 0.5.6 at some point, but uh, after a couple of years later, um, probably we'll start a new project and we decided to use the latest version of BWA. 
um, 0.7.7 maybe. But we want to make sure that um, the all the analysis results are uh, uh, compatible, um, uh, consistent, and has integrity with the older analysis. So we want to keep the older version so that uh, the additional data for the older project should be analyzed with older version of the analysis tools. Okay. Oh, so. Um, oh. So, so, so a random guy came to me and oh, want to install software uh, easily and try Docker. And we tried Docker, but we couldn't install Docker because an administrator refused to uh, install it because of a security problem or a lot of compatibility issues with drivers and etc. So um, we uh, basically abandoned the Docker. And oh. Another guy, uh, another guy came to me and how about Singularity? And Singularity is a much better tool uh, than Docker, but it, it still needs to persuade uh, an administrator to install Singularity because it requires root access to install Singularity. And it's not still sufficiently easy for command line newbies because uh, uh, we need to uh, teach them how to handle um, mounting an um, analysis directory or things like that. And can I, create uh, container images in HPC classes. So uh, we need a lot of space in our laptop. Then another guy came to me and says, oh, buy a condor. Um, and it, it's far better than other tools, but um, it's not satisfactory. So uh, we started a new project, a local package manager, that takes uh, con uh, those problems into consideration. And we also created uh, another um, Docker-like engine that is extremely lightweight. Uh, that uh, solves all those problems. It need, uh, doesn't need root support, uh, older distros, uh, support Docker images, things like that. And um, I want to propose uh, those things. Uh, let's integrate uh, those uh, new Docker-like um, Docker engine FMX with LPM. And also, uh, we want to provide a Docker image compatibility with this. And also, uh, we want to integrate Bioconda because uh, Bioconda has larger community support. So uh, we want to integrate it. And also, we want better UI, more packageable, and other, other tools. And here's the acknowledgments. Uh, Yansu is the developer of LPMX. Unfortunately, he's not here, but um, if you're interested in talking with him, then we can have some session on this week. And um, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you.